stampers how are you this morning today we're going to do this fun little interactive card i just saw it on the internet from the company that makes the product i used um i'm sure somebody else has done it there might be some more videos out there but check this out so you're in a night scene with a lighthouse what it lights up right it's this cool little interactive LED light that you can add to your projects. It's so fun. So, but at the same time, besides the tutorial, the light, I had uh, many requests to do the tutorial on this scene. Uh, it looks a lot harder than it is. Uh, it's merely some sponging. And we're going to go ahead and just jump right in and do it. Um, we are going to start with, we have our card base. This is a new color coming out in the new catalog next month called Seaside Spray. And I just love the tone of the blue. So we're going to use that as our card base. We're going to use Knight of Navy as our mat. And we're going to use the same Seaside Spray to create our image. We're going to be using two stamp sets. We're going to be using the Sailing Home. This is also coming out in the new catalog. And we're going to use the Lighthouse from this and the Compass. The Compass is going to be the part that you push and gives you a lighted lighthouse. All right. So we're going to use that one. We're also going to use the By the Bay. And I like the little house right there. And that's going to kind of draw our scene together. So let's move some stuff aside and bring in our Stamparatus. I like to use the Stamparatus, you know, I use it for everything, but to get nice, dark, sharp images, because you're going to see we need to line something up on this one um, to get this house scene to go all the way across. We're going to stamp another portion of it. So you'll see where the Stamparatus, being able to line it up is going to really help. So I want to start with the lighthouse. Let's say we want our lighthouse about... Let's say we want it about there. I'm try to, maybe I'll go over just a little bit. Let's stamp our lighthouse. We're just going to use black ink, black memento. And I like to support my stamp on my stamparatus. It just seems to ink it up easier. Get it nice and inked up. Yep, we're going to ink it one more time. Get a nice, crisp, sharp image. And then we're going to stamp it one more time on a piece of scrap. Find my little kitty cat. I have a kitty cat that holds my... Holds my, uh... Sticky notes. And there is a die that comes with this set. Let me show it to you really quick. There is a die set that comes with this Sailing Home set. But the only reason I'm not going to die cut a lighthouse, when you're sponging, you kind of want to trim like right on your line of your mask because that way your sponging is going to go all the way to the edges of your image. So we're just going to stamp this one more time on here. Doesn't have to be perfect on that one. Let me grab some wipes. We just need it to work as a mask. Set that stamp aside. I'm going to take this off. We'll trim this out in a little bit. Now we want to bring in our house.
Oh, I almost broke those magnets. I clip them together. That's why my magnets are always broken. I want to bring my house where the bush is kind of going right over the edge of the... Because I wanted to have a little bit of the ocean here where I can put some sea foam. Let's get him to move it up, down. Just going to put it about right there. You probably don't need to do the second part of this um, that I'm going to do. Just do a simple lighthouse and light it up. But I just thought this added nice character to the scene. So stamp that again. Nice and dark. I think I need to refill my ink pad. I think it's a little dry. There we go. So now what we're going to do. So I'm going to wipe this stamp off. I'm just using a baby wipe. Now. See how we have a blank spot right here. Well what I want to do is I want to bring in from the wall. Over to fill in this spot. So you can kind of see where your wall is here. So just kind of line it up you can kind of see and follow the line there it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because of the way that the stamp design is so we're going to go like that but we're only going to ink that part so it's about right here so we're just going to do a little bit of the ink right here on the edge of our Stamp. And see if we did it right. Oops, I didn't ink far enough up. But see, my wall came cut. Oh, I moved it. This may not turn out well. We'll find out here in a minute. I moved my magnet, I forgot. But I don't want any of this house, so I'm going to wipe off the house so I don't stamp another house. Let's see if how bad that moved. I forgot I moved my magnets. It's not bad. I can fix this. We're still lined up. And our little uh, compass is going to go there anyway. But anyway, you got the gist of how you do that. You're just going to stamp another portion of your image to get it to um, carry through. So I'm just going to grab a marker. So I'm going to grab my marker and I'm just going to go off the edge of the paper here. Just add a couple little carry over some of my grass. Doesn't have to be precise. Because a lot of it you're going to be shading away anyway. We'll draw our fence down a little bit here. There you go. It's repaired. It usually takes me several trial and errors to come across on this. So what we want to do here is trim out, and I didn't even bring scissors over. I'm going to trim out our lighthouse so that we can mask it. So what I meant when you're trimming is kind of just trim right on the line. Because that way, because the paper is going to kind of be above your image. So if you trim right on the line, your sponging is going to go right up to the edge of your stamped image. You can also use, which you guys may have seen me use before, is uh, masking fluid tape, or masking fluid. Um, since this project isn't really detailed sponging, I don't really need to use the masking fluid. 
Although it's probably faster than me trying to cut this out. And bam, we got our little thing here. Alright. So we got that. Let's lay it on here. See how you can kind of see the black edge? That's that's what you want. You want to be able to see that little black edge. And it seems like I cut off most of my sticky on this, but we'll see how it works. What you can do is use um, uh, removable, removable tape. This is like a little dotto removable tape. I'm going to put just a little bit on my... And it's very erasable. You can use your adhesive eraser. So I'm just going to put that on there. There, oops, I moved it. There we go. We got our lighthouse in place. Now we're going to take, bring in a couple more stickies. My kitty gave me some stickies. Isn't he cute? My husband got him for me at the office store. All right, now we want to determine where we want our, our moon horizon. So I'm probably just going to go a little ways down. And if you use your grid paper, line up your card on, on a square. And then pick a line. Lay down your sticky. And then go straight across to the line again. And it gives you a straight line. Especially if you don't have a full-size sticky. And now we want to create our moon. I think I'm just going to use, do I want a one inch? I think I'm going to go with a little bit, well, let's just do it. We're going to do a, oh, that's a one and three eighths. That's why that looks so big. Let's grab a one inch. Uh, okay, now I don't know where my one inch. Oh, here it is. I had it here. I was prepared and didn't know it. So I'm just going to use a one inch punch. This time, try to use where your sticky is on your post-it note. And I want my moon to come down over the, the water a little bit. So the fact that that's frayed a little is going to be fine. Let's put our moon about right there. There we go. Now... We're just going to do some, basically, some quick sponging. And all I'm using is Knight of Navy. And Pacific Point is going to be our ocean. So basically, for the majority of this card, it's just Knight of Navy. And the, for the sake of saving time, I do use sponge daubers and sponges all the time. This one is a special sponge dauber I have. It's made by Colorbox. It's just fast for me. I do so much sponging. So we're just going to ink up our, s and come off your paper. If you're good at brayering, this would be great brayered. So I know that my edges are going to be my darker. I think my, uh, it seems like my, my lighthouse isn't holding down. Let me put a little bit more removable tape on there. I can get it to work. There we go. See if that'll hold it down. There we go. And it's going to be okay to get a little blue on there because we're going to shade it anyway. Because your moonlight is coming from this side, which will make this side of your lighthouse shaded. When you're sponging and you do sideways swipes, especially on a uh, uh, sky scene, it's going to give you a cloud effect. I will speed up the tape on this.
Now we're going to mask off our ocean. Make sure when you mask, you leave a small line. So that'll give you a little bit darker horizon line. And now we're going to use Pacific Point. Take note where your moon is because you want it to be lighter. Coming, Your ray of moonlight is coming down this way. So take note that you want that area lighter. Again, do the side swipes when you're doing ocean. It'll give it that wave effect. And we've got our water done. And we've got our sky done. Now we want to take go back to our Knight of Navy. And we want to add some shadows to our scene. Because you see our scene's a little stark. So we know that the moon is here. So let's shade this side a little bit. We're going to take some of this darkness off of our lighthouse. And it's okay because you want it a little lighter right on this edge. That's where the, sun, the moon is hitting it. Shadow behind the lighthouse here. Now we know the back side of the house is a little bit shaded. So let's add some more right there. And we'll do some highlights on that with our white gel pen or white marker. So let's shade our grounds here. Still want a little bit of that moonlight. We're going to shade through there. There we go. So now we're going to do our water. Move some of my mess out of the way here. To do our water, we're going to take our... Uh, you can either use a chalk marker or a white gel or both. If you want subtle lines for your water, you're just going to do some... White chalk, chalk marker streaks. I want to add some, see how we've got a subtle water here by doing that? You want a little bit more light right where your, your moon is coming. Now, I want to add some waves to my water so i'm going to take a gel pen and i want to create some waves so i'm going to just kind of
We're creating white caps, I guess you would say. White cap waves. And as we get closer to the shore here, our waves are going to be bigger. So let's create some that are break, getting ready to break on this rock. They're not only going to get bigger, but they're also going to be closer together. Okay, now right along where your, your rocks are that meet the shoreline, we're going to create some foam. And all you need to do with that is do some random sort of dots there. And you're creating sea foam. And just to draw in, I'm going to zoom this in a little so that you can see the actual, how I'm doing these waves. Let's see if we can get in close enough to where you can tell what I'm doing here. Okay, see how we've got our waves there? Take your, since we were using Knight of Navy in Pacific Point, I'm going to just take my real light Knight of Navy and go right underneath these waves just to touch, just barely touch your marker to the paper. And all you're doing is giving the shadow where the wave is breaking. Okay, on the ones out here, I'm going to make them a little subtle. I'm just going to take my Knight of Navy, don't even re-sponge it, and just lightly pull it across that white. And it's just going to mute it a little bit so that your waves in the back are a little more muted. There you go. We have an ocean scene with some waves. We can even take our chalk marker and lighten it up a little bit. Now you have waves breaking on the beach. All right, now let's get to the fun spot. We're going to put a light in our lighthouse. So what do we want to do? We are using... This stuff is called... Um, let me zoom back out for you here. These little lights are called Chibatronics, and they're little itty-bitty. There's three in this one right here. These are really bright white light. I literally only used one on this little lighthouse. It's a bright little LED light. So we're just going to use one again. And what you need is you need the Chibatronic lights... Let me find the ones that I already had out. Oh, they're tiny, too. We will lose them. There they are. So I've got two left in my set of three from yesterday. So I'm going to just set those there. You also need a little tiny 3-volt battery. And then in the Chibatronics kit comes this copper... Uh, it's conduit. I call it conduit tape, which is going to make everything. It's going to create the circuit. So we're going to take and get our. We're going to move everything out of the way so I can work here. <clears throat> so we have our, our card base here. I'm going to go ahead and mount it on there. Hopefully I do this right. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and mount it on. I didn't even bring my glue over. I 
I like storing my glue like this, my little hand that holds it. When I pull up my glue, not only does setting it in here seal it, when I pull it up, you see the little globs of glue there? It pulls the sticky out of the end and it's ready to use. So I'm going to go ahead, just a little tips and trick thing. That's how I store my glue. I'm going to go ahead and put this onto our mat. See, when I use glue, I have room to shift it just a little bit because I really like to make sure it's very square. So then we're going to take a hole punch. We're just going to use my crocodile here. And we're going to put a little light in our lighthouse. So I'm going to punch a hole where I want my light. Doesn't have to be a very big hole. Now we have our lighthouse hole. Oh, you know, I need to stop this video. I just messed up, I think. Did I? No, I didn't. I don't think I did. We're going to keep going with it. I'm trying to remember if I should have had that mat on there. But I think we can put our electronics directly onto here. That was crazy. So I'm going to lay this on here. And grab a pencil. I'm going to mark the little hole, the little circle there, where my light is going to be. See, now I'm questioning myself. And with it there, I'm going to lift it up. I know I want my button to be pressed to be right here. So all I'm going to do is gently lift that up and put a little X, little tiny X. So I know that that's where I want my button. So now we're going to take, and with your battery, you just take a little piece of um, copy copy paper because what you're going to have is a little holder for your battery so we know that our battery holder is going to go right there so I'm just going to get my tear and tape put it right over my X This is only the second one I've made, you guys, so if, if I mess this up, I will try to redo the video. But you know what? We're going to learn it together. Here we go. We'll just learn it together. So I'm going to tape down my little battery case. Now we need to do our positive and negative. There's going to be a big plus on your battery and a big negative on your battery on these little LED lights the the very top there you're gonna see on it it's gonna have a plus and a minus right where because these gold parts right here are going to be what you're creating your contacts so the very top little pointed piece is a negative and the bottom is the positive so as long as your positive and negative match up with your battery you're gonna get light so now I want to draw how I want this connection to go. So we know that my light's going to go right there. So I'm going to take and put two little lines right above and below that little spot because that's where our light's going to sit. And then you got to figure out if your battery is going to be positive side down, negative side down. I just do mine the positive side down because it's a, a smoother, wider surface. So we know that our positive is going to be down. So let's run our positive line. We're just drawing our schematics and we want everything to meet right there. Okay. Now this is our negative, and our negative is going to be on this side of the paper. So let's draw over, come down, see where the fold is? 
we're just going to come slightly over that fold and then over to here okay and we've got our other x the idea of this is is you don't want these two conduit or connectors to touch until this closes I guess I'm not really an electrician, so it's a little hard to explain. Now, this copper tubing, or copper tubing, copper um, tape is fairly easy to maneuver. It's got uh, sticky on it, double-sided sticky. So we're going to start it. And the video I saw... They seem to figure out how to turn corners a lot easier than I do, but so let's start here and start on our negative. I'm going to go ahead and just so I know, do negative, positive, so I know what I'm doing there. Then you got to turn the corner. You don't want to tear this tape, so you kind of have to... Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There's really no, no science to this. But we want to turn the corner, so we're going to fold it a little bit to create the corner. Follow our diagram. I feel like I have three thumbs right now. Go there. Do another corner. Over to our X. Trim it off. Now we're going to do our, po our positive side. And you want to make sure that these don't touch each other until you get down here. So we're going to go on our line here, turn our corner, oh that one turned out better so it looks like if you kind of lift it up and fold it back over itself it turns. So be careful not to get up against that one there and turn our corner again. And to our X. Now I'm just going to take a bone folder and smooth this stuff out. Smooths out really easily. You just want to make sure you don't have any tears or gaps that's going to lose your connection. So let's take our bone folder and smooth that out. Now remember that our positive was here because we wrote it up there. Our positive on our battery is here. Come out a little bit for you. Now I'm going to use double-sided tape on my battery. I don't want this battery to move around. So I'm actually going to put some tearing tape on there because it's sturdy. Am I the only one that ever has trouble getting the the release paper off of tear and tape? And tear and tape's even easier than when there was uh uh remember the red one we had, the red double sided tape? I could never ever get the release paper off. There we go. That was painful to watch, wasn't it? So now we're going to put our battery down. Make sure it's not touching there until we want it to. Now you're going to take your little light. And when I tell you these are little, they are little. They're tiny, tiny. But you will, I don't know if the camera's even going to show it. But there's a little tiny negative and a little tiny positive written right on 
the little light. So when you peel it off, it's it's got adhesive. I'm going to use tweezers. So it's got adhesive on the back. We know our positives there and our negatives there. So you're just going to see the little golds there. You want to make sure those are t touching each side. And that your light, the little tiny light, is where your little circle is that's going to shine through your... Apparently, from what the website that makes these Chibatronics says, these lights are actually uh, powerful enough to um, illuminate through a piece of watercolor paper. And they do come in other colors. I think there's yellow and red... There might even be green. I'm not really positive. I, I just found some and bought them. I'll put a link in the video to where I found them. So now watch this. Oh. Oh, we don't have connection. Or I did it wrong. But we don't have connection. Okay, hold on. Make sure we have a solid... Well, I may have to pause the video. Apparently, I did it wrong. Okay, we're back. What I did, which is exactly what I told you not to do, I had this upside down. So if your positive and your negative are not correct right here, it's not going to work because we've got our positive and negative on the battery here. So that was what I did. I had this upside down from my positive to negative, which apparently was my eyes because look we have a light look at that okay so now we need to build up around this little battery so that this isn't constantly touching we don't want it constantly touching and staying lit so i need to make sure i'm yeah it's gonna work okay now let's build up and I just have some foam tape here and depending on how thick your foam tape is you may need to do two layers because you need this little piece to be above the battery and right now this foam that I'm using is at about the battery's same height. So I'm going to do two layers of this. Because you need your little battery house to be above the battery. Now when they push it, I almost seem like I need, and we're going to see if that works. I think I need my tape to go farther out. So I'm going to take a little piece of tape, the, of the copper tape, and we're going to see if this works. I'll find out in a minute. I want to add more contact space, so I'm going to make sure it's still touching the other copper here. I'm just going to add another strip there. Just to make sure. I, yep, that works. That way I have more, more contact space there. To make sure when they push it, it's going to light up the light. You could probably even use a a piece of um, cardstock or uh, 
Yeah, just a real thin cardstock instead of copy paper, but the copy paper seems to be a little more forgiving. So now we want to build this up to mount on our card. Now we're going to see if I really did this whole tutorial right. I only made one of these. This is my second time doing this. So if it comes out and I did it two times in a row correctly. Woohoo. Do you guys hear my dog crying at the door? That was very sad. My dogs don't deal with closed doors at all. They don't like rejection. Okay. So now we're going to fold this over. And the tape paper will hold it in place a little bit. I need to stand so I can put this on here squarely. Oops. Make sure you have all your sticky off. I didn't get that on there perfectly square, but let's make sure it works. Look at that, the light lights. So now we're going to take and we're going to stamp the compass on just a piece of scrap whisper white. And I think I want to do it in, let's do it in uh, Night of Navy. And then all you have to do, you can either make a card where it says push or Whatever, all I'm going to do is put a note in this that says to light your way, push on the compass or something. I'll think of something creative to say, maybe. And we're going to punch that out. Make sure I'm in the right area where my light lights. And put our compass right in the middle. So when they push on the compass, look at that. They light the lighthouse. There you go, everybody. And I did put that on there crooked. I'll try to fix it off film. But look at that. How fun are these? Hope you enjoyed it today. Have a great day. Happy stamping.